Uh, welcome back everybody hit that like hit that subscribe comment down below let me know what you think about this video we win again we win again and there's a lot to talk about in this win this win was hard fought it was going to be we all knew it we all knew it wasn't just going to be some slouch team that comes in here and we all know it's the Patriots. Everyone needs to take the Patriots serious. Bill Belichick is a great coach. And it was a hard-fought win. It was one of those that uh, wasn't as exciting, I guess. Well, I guess, uh, honestly, it was pretty exciting. It's not like it wasn't exciting. I was excited. I, I loved watching the game. It was you, you, The Dolphins seemed to keep you on your toes at all times. And, yeah, it, it's just not going to be... It's not going to be one of those things where we just win easy. But... You know, of course, it's the Patriots. You know, they, they come up with game plans. That's why Bill Belichick is such a great coach. He comes up with game plans to take away your best receiving threats. He will do that every single game. And he did it again. So, you know, we'll go over the stats. Tua Tunga by Loa, 21 for 30, 249, one touchdown, one interception. I'll go over it later. I'm not even going to talk about it because I know some people are going to be like, uh, Raheem Oster, 18. Uh, carries 121 yards, two touchdowns. Seven Ahmed, three for 13. Devon A. Chain, um, one for five. And then Izukama, three for five. Receiving Jalen Waddell, four for 86 yards. Tyreek Hill, five for 40 yards and a touchdown. River Craycraft, two for 34. Savon Ahmed, three for 28. Braxton Barrios, two for 28. Uh, Durham Smythe, three for 23. And then you got a couple of others by Mostert and A. Chain. And then the defense, the defense stepped up this game. So Javon Holland stud, six tackles, five assisted tackles, so 11 in total. Xavier Howard, six tackles and an interception. Bradley Chubb, we'll talk about in a second, five tackles, two assisted, one sack, and a forced fumble. Eli Apple, five for one. Uh, David Long actually did better this game, and he had a sack, you know, seven total tackles. Uh, Christian Wilkins had six and a sack. And then Andrew Van Ginkle, man. I'm telling you, dude, he's just got that spark. He just does that that's just instant lightning in a bottle. Um, so those are going to be the stats. And so number one, what we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll talk about this first before the defense, but Tua Tonga by Loa. He had a great game. Now, the one thing that we need to see Tua stop doing, because he hasn't had to pay for it yet, because our defense keeps not allowing points after this, is I don't really know how you practice this, but it seems to be not the throwing up of the ball. Obviously, I know he wants to get the ball down deep. I get that. But he seems to get... Uh, he, he seems to get to a point where he doesn't set his feet and then he tries to launch the ball. And what happens is you see it every time where there's an old Kurt Warner video that talks about this where basically says that you want to point your feet towards the receiver. And sometimes I think he just wants to hit Tyreek Hill so bad for this big play that, uh, of course, he doesn't have, you know, the arm of Justin Herbert, you know, or... You know, one of those players. But it's even hard for them to throw a ball like that to Tyreek Hill down the field. You know, Tyreek Hill is the fastest receiver in the NFL. It's hard for anybody to throw a ball when you're off-planted. But he sometimes seems to do that where he doesn't set his feet and he tries to launch it down the left or right side of the field. And especially when it's the left side because he's left-handed, so he's kind of like open when he's throwing the ball. It's just he's got to stop doing that because he did it last game too. And he just he needs to set his feet first before he tries to throw that deep ball because Tyreek Hill is just way too fast. You can't arm the ball to him. You know, there's really nobody. I, I'm sorry, but even Patrick Mahomes would underthrow Tyreek Hill. It's, it's hard to throw him the ball when you're not set, especially when he's on a streak because 
he's running so fast down the field that you have to launch it as far as you can throw it. That's basically what you have to do for Tyreek Hill. So he's got to stop doing that. But besides that, there were so many great plays by Tua. I mean, he had one bad play, you know, the interception. That was it. The, the snap issues keep continuing, which is something we'll talk about. But Tua had a great, another great game. You know, it was so many plays like that one play where he's, he's moving around in the pocket and then he just dimes it right to, uh, I believe it was Berrios. Yeah, Braxton Berrios over on the right hash. Uh, that was beautiful. Um, he, had, he had a lot of great plays, man. I mean, Tua. And we got to see him take a sack. And what I thought was interesting about that is that when he took the sack, he wasn't trying to do a whole bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's, that's the key here. And that I, I think he worked for in the offseason to understand that is that he just went down. You know, he just held onto the ball fell down <laughs> that's all he did and that's exactly what he's been needing to do for years you know he's like those types of things he's trying to like break out of the pocket and, you know he's trying to move back and then that's where he gets thrown backwards or you know someone's trying to get him but this time you just curl up again put your neck down and he just fell to the ground you know took the sack which is something that he's been needing to learn for a long long time um and then other than that, 70 completion percentage, 101 quarterback rating. I mean, he did he did great. You know, there were a couple drops, too. Like the Jalen Wall, he probably would have 300 yards if Jalen Wall didn't drop that slant um, in the end zone or on our end zone, you know, which Jalen Wall's got to stop dropping the, the balls. I mean, he's he's just – he does it like once a game, and it, it's it's kind of annoying, um, which he's a great player. No, don't, don't take anything away from him, but he's got to stop dropping those passes because sometimes it's like – seems like it's one a game where he drops a pass. Um, but – yeah, Tua did fantastic. He, he did fantastic. And against this type of defense, to still put up 24 points is, you know, pretty remarkable. You know, and, and it, we only put up 24 because Jason Sanders missed a field goal. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Missed one and we had one blocked. Number two is going to be the defense. And the defense looked really good stellar you know i think one of the biggest uh takeaways from this game is that bradley chubb does not stink <laughs> he played extremely well in this game a forced fumble a sack he looked like the old bradley chubb again and if he can continue this you got to remember jalen phillips wasn't even on the field today and you have andrew van ginkle making all of these plays on the other side too you know I wonder what packages they're going to come up with. Because obviously you can't take Andrew Van Ginkle off the field. You have to keep him on there. You know, he has to stay on the field. He makes too many plays. The rushing defense was much, much better than last week. Um, David Long looked much better. You know, Jerome Baker, man, I, this is going to be his, his final year. I mean, I, I just, a lot of the plays, I just, you know, he, he just looks lost. You know, it's, it's he's just able to tackle that's that's his only ability i think because in pass coverage he just there's points where it's just you got to just realize where you are on the field because if you just take a couple steps back you know like the, the touchdown to hunter henry if you just take a, i know they, there was an illegal blocking which we'll talk about in a second uh if you take a couple steps back he can't complete that throw you know and there was another one that i, I believe he was running and if you just stop and let, let your other guy go get the quarterback because mac jones can't really run um you know you're fine you know if you step back then he can't complete the pass but he just seems to not really know where he is on the field and xavier howard i mean he almost had two interceptions in this game they keep calling crappy crappy calls against him with these pass interferences it was the, the two games in a row that he can't he seems to not be able to touch a receiver when they're coming out of their break which is ridiculous and he keeps getting these pass interference i don't see anything wrong with it i don't see anything wrong with what he's trying to do he it, it's like he, he, the, the rest seem to think that, that he just can't touch the receiver at all you can put your hands on him a little bit as long as you're not grabbing and he's not grabbing so i don't know what that is but he's he's starting to get those interceptions again like we said in Vic Fangio's system. He's going to get the interceptions. He did against Devontae Parker, too. So, a little bit of, you know, whatever. Uh, the next one, the number three, is, is going to be the rest where we're really trying to keep the Patriots in this game. The, the fact that Hunter Henry had a touchdown where he illegally blocked down the field and they had an offensive lineman that was illegally down the field. He blocked the linebacker on a passing play. 
you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't go down the field and block a linebacker and then go out for a pass. That's that, that you, that's just so simple. Like you can't do that, you know. So the refs were horrible. They were calling PIs for no reason. Um, they they just they just really stunk. And I, I was actually surprised they didn't give them that first down at the end because I thought they were just going to try and keep them in this game because that's what they were doing the whole entire time. You know, they were calling a lot of dumb things. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the pass interference on Xavier Howard where he was just literally. It, it, Gesicki was making a cut and he just went around him and tried to keep with him. That was ridiculous. Um, and then the, the the touchdown where they missed so many things. It just looked like they just closed their eyes and, you know, let the Patriots do whatever they wanted. Yeah, the refs, you know, again, they're trying to keep these, these teams in the game. And it ain't working. <laughs> it's not working. The, we're just too good. These teams cannot keep up with us. But this game should have been less. It should have been, you know... They shouldn't have scored that that touchdown. It, it it was just ridiculous that they missed everything on that play. But it is what it is. Um, and the last thing that we're going to talk about, Jonathan Taylor would be great. But if Raheem Mostert keeps running like this, and Devon A. Chain starts coming into his own, and Savan Ahmed, you know, does his thing, we don't need a fully rushing team. We're pretty good at passing the ball. Do we need Jonathan Taylor? Because Raheem Mostert looked fantastic last week or yesterday. I don't know, man. Do we need him? I, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I think Raheem Mostert did a fantastic job. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But comment down below. Let me know what you think about this video. As always, guys, hope you have a great rest of your day. Fins up, baby. Peace.